Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this day in the last video of the morning. These videos come in the evening, the MCQ videos they come. And 16th of August, it is uh, some important formation, some important article regarding Kerala situation. Uh, it's an excellent one and many points you can take for, for the means uh, stays there. And some issues are important for prelims also. So let's start the lesson. 60% off uh, will be there uh, for today only. It is the last date and uh, you can call on these numbers you can visit the website also chat section is available there and pocket new news app is trending on google play and the description of these courses you will get uh, below the video and you can call on these numbers for all these courses pdf you will get here on this facebook group and uh, the telegram channels link you will also find there so pdf uh, i upload uh, on both these uh, sources and you can follow me on instagram too first article lessons after the great deluge Kerala needs to adopt watershed based master planning and review building bylaws. First of all, nature is unstoppable. When it shows its force, you just have to compromise and accommodate yourself. You cannot fight with nature, first of all. Now, population pressures are going against the nature, that's for sure. One reason is uh, uh, okay that uh, population pressure is there huge number of people are living there in Kerala now or in any other part of the world and especially in the dense areas so where they will go they will build their houses uh, uh, within uh, the territory only and uh, one more thing as the per capita income goes up and especially for the Kerala many people are living in, in, in Gulf countries and uh, 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 they are demanding separate houses they are earning more than uh, and then uh, the past so these kind of conditions are leading to more and more infrastructure building more and more uh, uh, builders coming into this uh, scenario and they are uh, getting licenses for these areas where they should not build so normally there is no problem and uh, they can manage with the uh, uh, simple technologies and all but when the nature pushes here and uh, it shows its real force then everything is devastated so we are learning only when we are devastated many lives are lost and lakhs of people are uh, uh, homeless then only we uh, become aware about those and we make committees and the committees give uh, recommendations and half of them we follow Mo uh, most of them we do not follow so that's the uh, simple way and that is the uh, established norm for india everywhere especially in kerala as i told you it's a specific area now let's look at the map this is kerala coastal region arabian sea and uh, the topography has been established like that uh, since the geological past you see uh, one flank was broken from here and uh, all along this uh, western coast and uh, that flank fell into arabian sea and block mountains of western Ghats. those were created and here this is the windward side for the southwest monsoon we know it is coming from this side so on the west uh, side of it where mainly the kerala cities are located there are fast flowing rivers and very fast flowing rivers during monsoon times so when they swell when a lot of water is there in that flow so they create these devastations and uh, sometimes like it was there uh, the condition in the last year and in this year also when after 40 50 years we saw this kind of flooding so that killed many many people and here uh, this uh, specific uh, uh, geography specific topography has its own consequences we all know that uh, there are many low-lying areas and uh, by the side of it kerala is that kind of a state where all these uh, cities like kolam kochi and uh, alapuja thesor kasargod all are becoming uh, bigger cities now and with the fastest pace these cities have turned into metropolis so that's why huge pressures are there and the per capita income and as i told you that it is rising so we had two articles in the past where they said that uh, you cannot uh, copy the uh, gulf model here or you cannot build uh, build those cities uh, on some other cities platform because the kerala's geography is unique there now it is talking about the problems so kerala conservation of paddy land and wetland act 2008 was there now it is uh, diluted many many times 
and in 2017 high court of kerala gave a verdict that no allowance should be given to all those constructions in the low lying areas and you should not obstruct the natural paths why because the same thing happened in tamil nadu in chennai and uh, similar things are happening in kerala although these are coastal areas and it looks like uh, what is the problem in the drainage they are located by the side of sea but when the water is uh, moving according to the gravity it moves according to the gravity so in the low lying areas always uh, it will have its path when constructions are done in these low lying areas where uh, lakes were there uh, uh, bigger drains were there now uh, since uh, since last uh, uh, few decades there has been no flooding in these those areas so that's why they thought that uh, for the last two, two generations we have been observing here that uh, there is no uh, uh, devastating floods and all and i think it has all gone so they allowed all these constructions and uh, these buildings they mushroomed here in these these areas and when these when these uh, buildings they come up then they block all the drainage areas and that's why the city gets flooded and at that time more flooding more cloud burst more uh, 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 drastic situations in the, in the monsoon times they come then they do not have any solution and people get killed and uh, their houses uh, their uh, uh, streets everything is devastated similar kind of scenes we have seen in uh, uh 2013 flooding in uk uh, uttarakhand actually not uk uttarakhand so there what happened illegal constructions they must room mushroomed uh, along the bank of uh, those uh, simple rivers those were not mighty streams but when that cloud burst happened and it was combined with the gravity and the steep uh, area because uh, these are the higher areas so steep uh, the ground is there so a lot of force was created and you see one more problem is there when in these low lying areas people are living why they are living mainly poor populations are living in low lying areas rich people move towards higher areas so that these kind of floodings are not there water moves towards low lying area so it is very affordable for the poor people to construct their homes there and uh, uh, these uh, nexus between the corrupt officials and the politicians they allow these builders to build these homes because after that what happens normally any de any devastation comes then uh, inquiries are set up committees will be set up and that is the best solution uh, uh, in the politics committees will be formed then some experts will come they will give some recommendation and then they will not follow them so these things happen always so that's why they do not have any fear so i'm telling you the re real reason why always they allow these kind of constructions in these areas because they do not fear and they all have connections with the uh, powerful people politicians and they always get their assets there now what we should do we have laws but dilution is there and uh, they are not implementing what was said what was directed and uh, regular permits they get there now in the unique situation of kerala 44 fast flowing rivers are there that drain the rain water and these are uh, called lifelines of uh, kerala also because uh, uh, located on the coast but these fast flowing rivers they are feeding these people and the population is rising with a very fast pace and you see it is the last stretch of western ghats and many many uh, hills uh, from nilgiri still kadavam they are coming and uh, all the areas are ecologically sensitive according to the madhav gadigal report the first report regarding the western ghats second came as kasturi rangan report so this gadigal report was totally in favor of the ecology and they declared almost all the area of western ghats as ecologically sensitive area and these areas are coming Uh, mostly in ecological sensitive zone one means the maximum protection must be there. So according to this thing, uh, we should not allow any of that construction because always these areas are sensitive and any time these calamities uh, may appear. Now you and also created a report regarding that the post disaster needs assessment PDNA report, and that was also showing that uh, the gaps are there in the laws and policies and. Uh, whatever laws were there those were not implemented properly so most of them are not implemented or followed to the letter and spirit so that's the main reason that they are having these kind of uh, uh, troubles now states revenue lands 
most of these lands they are coming uh, uh, in these areas where wetlands and forests are there whenever you will see you will see any video from kerala uh, on youtube and all then always you will see forest areas and uh, some wetlands and uh, by the side of these uh, 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 units uh, you will see constructions so that's the unfortunate thing where these people will go they will build their homes they will uh, come up with their businesses and factories and all and uh, this is the risk but you see we need to choose between th these two th things means economic and uh, existence priorities are there but nature is also there but you see ultimately it comes to a scene where uh, we have to talk about our capacities so certainly nature's capacity is way more than the human's capacity so that's why we have to make adjustments and we have to decide in the favor of ecology otherwise it is not only the optional thing it's a mandatory thing also because people uh, people get killed but normally poor people get killed so that again uh, a, a different fact that uh, uh, complexes this debate so who cares about the poor people because in low lying areas mainly poor people are living so that's a thing so the ultimately the state has to decide according to the ecological constraints because we cannot fight with nature that's the last sentence that we can tell here master plan only can help and why because master plans are made and all the technological expertise are involved in that they can simulate the situations they can imagine about the situations and that is the only thing that can help here technology is the only thing that can help here they have to imagine the situations because every year these kind of scenarios are not available this is the very opportunistic time that they can know about the situation that what worse or the worst scenario we can experience so this is going on for the last two years so now they can understand a lot of things about kerala so they have to make master plans and they have to take the technological help there and computer graphics they help a lot as these things these things are not given here but uh, i'm telling you for the essay points or the mains examination points with computer graphics and simulation we can have those scenarios where we can build those uh, topographies on graphics and we can have any idea that in which way floodings may appear in which way calamities may appear in these uh, uh, hilly areas debris is a very dangerous thing because it becomes wet it becomes very thick and heavy and according to the gravity it comes down and it kills many many people so this thing happened in kerala this year more than 60 70 people they, they were buried under the uh, debris why that happened because in the monsoon season it was all wet and it became very very heavy and uh, the the hill could not support it and it came down according to the, according to the gravity so these simulations can help here and they can tell you that what is needed and you add that into policy and the laws and you consider all those recommendations most of the times recommendations are not accepted that's the big reason and that's why we have loopholes and we always dilute these laws according to the needs and these corrupt officials and politicians they can give any kind of explanation after that so people need to be aware about this and maximum number of citizens they must know about these master plans and they must remain aware about those situations so these things may help here okay scientific manner is the very basic thing that should be applied and what are the recommendations those must be analyzed and those those must be on the uh, public platform available to the people so that they all know about these things that which are uh, applied here which are not applied here which are accepted which are not accepted so uh, that that's the thing so techniques are must in the master plans and uh, you see similar conditions are there in many countries like in denmark netherlands these kind of countries they also uh, experience these kind of floodings sometimes worse than kerala but they manage them very very well because they have technologies and uh, they have cloud burst responsive plannings means with the help of uh, technology they have made plannings according to that so they are able to develop those uh, uh, cities in that manner that, that they can handle these uh, issues so always there are issues of capacities always there are issues of affordability always there are issues of population pressures all are against india because india is not that much rich and although it's rich but the poor people who are living there nobody wants to 
uh, spend on those people. So that's the big reason. So state has this responsibility and we have to make plans according to that state uh, is the ultimate responsible unit here. So that's the case. So imaginative action, proper planning, technological help and construction techniques we must apply there. So this is important for GS paper 2, 3 and SA all. All three are applicable here. Next, trade rhetoric. Trump said that we may opt out of WTO. The same country which has got maximum advantage from uh, uh, WTO establishment. And at, that was the time when they were uh, sailing on the globalization uh, wave. And now they are choosing the protectionist move. So that's why they are opposing the similar thing. They say that 164 WTO members have got developing countries uh, tag and with this developing country tag they have got many many exemptions and uh, uh, they can seek partial exemptions and uh, uh, some allowance from the WTO for uh, imposing some uh, anti-dumping duties uh, tariffs and all uh, against some countries and along these exemptions they also want free and fair trade they also want their export items to be traded to be imported in other countries uh, in a free manner so trump said that uh, developing countries are having both the sides both the uh, uh, both the favors on their side because it is the ultimate need for the developing countries we all know about that we can talk about india india is in a developing stage and it has been there in this stage for decades now so time is important time is crucial uh, the developed countries always uh, turn against the de developing countries so that's okay that uh, it has been it has been very very long time that uh, these countries are there in this stage but it will be there obviously this condition will be there because it takes time these countries they took advantage of the industrial revolution uh, at that time they polluted the environment they took advantage of all these multilateral institutions and now they are developed and they do not need money of the support and they try to uh, distort the trade by their own uh, power like we have lost two cases against us uh, one was regarding the solar panels uh, one was regarding the uh, some we got regarding some duty or something like that so they won those cases why because they had their stakes there their influence is much more uh, than any de any other de developing country there so that's why it was in favor of america only and now america is uh, uh, complaining about this issue because they have chosen a different path there america first policy protectionist policy and they know that globalization is helping the developing countries so that's why they want to block all these moves and one more reason big reason that he may be raking up this issue not to further the cause of global free trade he doesn't want a ideal world he actually want a simple convenient pretext to justify further trade barriers against china like countries china and maybe india also because india is also having uh, uh, tariff issues with america so these are all excuses and that's why he is pointing fingers at others that follow protectionist policies and uh, justifying to impose retaliatory traf tariffs against these countries so retali uh, retaliatory tariffs are the main reason that uh, he is raking up this issue okay so it's a kind of a fight between these these two groups developing countries and the developed countries china is also a developing country china is not a developed country china says that our per capita income is uh, very low because of the big population there although they have made progress but the populations are huge in both these countries like india and china so they have their uh, real issues and the environmental concerns sustainable businesses concern affordability concerns and uh, changing technologies uh, concerns are there so obviously there are huge pressures against developing countries and in this age where they are moving uh, 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 towards becoming developed and uh, still they are taking care about these uh, issues like uh, renewable energy and all so it's very very difficult for countries like india to maintain these issues and a country like america which intentionally distorts the uh, world trade by giving subsidies because they can afford so they are giving uh, uh, subsidies in many areas like in agriculture uh, subsidies it's always it's always a controversial area in the WTO meetings where 
countries like america they give support to their industries they can give subsidies and they dumped these uh, uh, cheaply made items why cheaply made because subsidies are given so cheaply made items are dumped into other countries like india and their industries are devastated because of that and that's the actual distortion of the trade but these are bigger countries that's why they create their own talks they create their own issues and they will propagate and advertise their own uh, agendas and in reality they are the only ones who are distorting these trade uh, issues today america is going towards protectionism and that is again the, the the free trade issue so how can america talk about that it's all a hypocrisy but it's it's like that so uh, it's all a fight between the countries and it is it is all coming ultimately to the capacity issues who whoever is having capacity whoever can force other uh, that will have its way so we have to wait here and we will have to see so gs paper 2 uh, would be important here and 3 also would be important here next ebola maintaining ebola we uh, discussed about this issue that in drc democratic republic of congo in the eastern part of it on the border areas goma city is there where there's there was a recent outbreak and with 60 percent fatality 67 percent fatality it's, it's a dangerous thing 67 fatality means it's a extremely dangerous disease and uh, uh, it has killed around 2000 people we discussed about the Merck's preventive vaccine that uh, was promising some issues here and against the viral disease as ebola is ebola is a uh, viral fever so very less uh, antiviral drugs are there but this Merck's vaccine was uh, showing some results which were positive and around 97 percent efficacy was there it means that was good but they could not give a hundred percent certificate to it now some other drugs which are uh, proving to be promising here that map uh, remdesivir and this regn eb3 and map 114 these last two regn eb3 and map 114 their effectiveness is too much and uh, uh, they are becoming very much uh, promising after the Merck uh, vaccine so it's a great great news for humanity whenever these kind of information come then uh, it's a great thing for humanity because uh, always we are afraid because of these dangerous diseases and we all need uh, uh, cures for diabetes uh, cancers uh, HIV and mainly these NCDs so it looks very foolish when we always discuss nonsensical issues like religion uh, polit uh, and nonsensical political issues and all and here we have uh, dire challenges in front of us means they are killing people in front of us every day lakhs of people are killed because of uh, uh, drug resistance issues uh, and uh, hiv cancer diabetes and you see these are killing us with a lot of fear cancer is given chills to all the people every person above 40 is constantly living in a fear fear that uh, i may get cancer any day so these things are really dangerous so we need those cures and the maximum priority should, must be given to these diseases and whenever uh, in this environment these kind of information come then it becomes much more important so they may ask you in the prelims examination about these details a very important one and uh, uh, you see the promise that they are showing eb3 and mab114 with them mortality is only 29 percent and 34 so that's good with zetmap and remdesivir it is close to 50 percent so that is also very good but uh, they need to improve a lot here and they need to do more and more trials there and africa has always been a lab for these pharmaceutical companies many times we have seen very bizarre kind of disease diseases they appear in africa and in these uh, undeveloped countries and uh, then they will come with with some cures so who knows uh, they may be running some labs there and they intentionally create those kind of uh, uh, issues but we cannot say that officially because uh, uh, they are coming up with the many many solutions now so what goes on what goes on in uh, uh, these uh, poor african countries nobody knows but we have the, this news that some promises are there from the pharmaceutical industries there so that's a great thing EB3 is a cocktail of three antibodies generated by injecting Ebola virus into mice model that has a human-like immune system. Mice is also a mammal, so it has an immune system like humans. So that's why these uh, uh, experiments are done there. Antibodies means these are important. Anything as a foreign particle, maybe it's a virus, bacteria, or any path pathogen. 
antibodies are created most of the time against those things and sometimes uh, when you give these vaccines and all then permanent uh, antibodies will be there in your body whenever you will get that inf in, uh, infection in the future then these antibodies uh, will appear again and they will fight with the infection and you you would not need to go against any therapy again so uh, that is the case with the vaccines and the antibodies so that's a great great issue okay so all these vaccination issues are important for the prelims like Merck's vaccine the trials for uh, malaria are also going on uh, regarding dengue also in india some issues are going on regarding rotavac uh, rotavac you must have heard about the rotavirus uh, these trials were uh, there in the past in india now in the 100 day span of this government they are going to vaccinate all the kids below five years of age uh, till uh, end of this september september 19 so these are additional issues uh, in the same area of vaccines so these all details will be important this year next a great information by the announcement from lal Kila by prime minister of india that a post of chief of defense staff will be created and that's finalized now we felt this need during the kargil war when we lost many soldiers because of the delays in the coordination and we uh, decided about deploying the air force there it got some delay and that's why we felt that one single authority must be there which would advise the uh, executive there the ministry and the uh, prime minister there and uh, this way it became very important in this uh, changing scenario today that we apply that experience and uh, this uh, single uh, post will be there above these three chiefs we have army navy and force and these are four star uh, 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 chiefs of these uh, uh, of these uh, forces so it will be decided later that it will be a four star officer like these people or the five star above these one now some speculations are there that general bipin rawat who is uh, uh, the, the, the the chief of the army staff he will be appointed as cds because right now bs dhanoa is the most senior one and he is heading the cosc also the chief of staff committee that is a temporary body in the name of uh, uh, this uh, single authority so that's the temporary body above all these uh, three forces but he will retire in september 30 on september 30 so bipin Rawat will stay till december this year so he may be appointed as next cds so that's a crucial information they may ask you a lot of things about it in the prelims and in the means that uh, why we need cds what is the need and uh, with what experience we are deciding in this way and uh, would this single post of cds will be able to suggest properly to the executive these kind of questions may be there Naresh and the committee also uh, also uh, gave the similar recommendation in 2012 and lieutenant general db sekatkar committee was also there and in this committee's 99 recommendations this was also a important recommendation in december 16th so it was very much uh, uh, needed and legitimate to decide about this uh, case and uh, right now what is the arrangement right now there is a temporary cosc chief of staff committee is there and that is headed alternatively by these chiefs right now bs danoa is chairing this uh, committee so that's a temporary one so we need a permanent one so that we can have a better coordination next uh, it's a repeated one regarding the sri lanka's politics as i told everything about the uh, gotabaya Raja Paksha, what kind of image he has and uh, the similar rhetorics are going on in Sri Lanka. Islamophobic uh, situations are there and uh, uh, the nationalistic rhetorics are going on. Bureaucracy is also inclined towards this nationalistic discourse and uh, these all things are very much conducive for the election of Gotabaya Raja Paksha, who is a controversial leader and he had suppressed many many uh, groups 10 years back in the civil war and his image is of a strong man's image. So these two brothers Mahinda Raja Paksha and Gotabaya Raja Paksha they may rule the scenario of uh, Sri Lanka very soon again and uh, it is not accepted by all that's why it's a controversial move so we will have to see it's our neighbor and uh, the Tamilian politics is also dependent on the Sri Lanka's issue so that's why it's important but uh, uh, not much because it is not India's issue it's a Sri Lanka's issue and it's a political one so we will not discuss that next 
we know about the tuberculosis in 1940s 50s people were uh, trembling with fear with the name of tb the way they get chills uh, with the name of cancer today because the treatment treatment was not available and tb was incurable then these antibiotics came and it became curable and people got the major relief there and nobody can imagine that again in this 21st century there can be a situation where people will be get uh, will be killed with, with this uh, bacterial disease called tuberculosis why because the drugs are not working today why because in countries countries like india in and uh, any other uh, countries like afghanistan pakistan dense populations are living they are living in dense and uh, in those uh, uh, colonies they are uh, living like nine ten members in a family in a very small house so it's a highly infectious disease it spreads through air so breathing eating together these kind of uh, uh, great great supports are there for this bacteria so it spreads like fire and when these people get sick then they go for tre treatment and they get this treatment which is there for uh, eight to nine months it's a long treatment and it, it, it's it's very difficult because it affects your liver kidneys and all so it gives a lot of uh, difficulty to the patient so that is the reason that people leave this uh, uh, course in between maybe after one two three months when they feel better then they leave the treatment and the bacteria is suppressed and uh, uh, they, f they feel that they they are okay now the disease is gone but that reappears after some time and the immunity becomes weak and it's it is much more powerful now because it has learned to fight with the drug and it has become drug resistant bacteria now so that is the case with multi drug resistant tb and that is uh, uh, giving chills and there is a combination of hiv plus tb where the immunity is totally compromised and these people uh, uh, most in most of the cases they get tuberculosis infection and it's very difficult to save that patient because tb is very dangerous the treatment is very difficult and in hiv uh, infection the immunity is totally compromised so aids tb or the hiv tb combination is a deadly one and in some countries there are very high chances chances of this uh, mdr tb like in south africa around 75000 people were killed every year and uh, around 322000 active cases are there means it's more than one fifth the number that people are getting killed and it is all the case of mdr tb that people are not responding to the first line drugs that's why we need second line third line drugs now a new uh, drug called uh, preto manid was developed by new york based non-profit organization called tb alliance and it is approved now by, now by the u.s uh, drugs and uh, food administration and it's, it's a great news and again as i told you when they were showing some promise in ebola here in tuberculosis they are showing some big relief so we need second line third line drugs because the first lines are not working and maybe those are bolstering the bacteria's resistance more if these drugs first line drugs they are not working properly they are not effective in a hundred percent way that means they are giving half treatment means half of the bacteria they are fighting with that drug that means they are learning with fight uh, learning to fight with that drug means uh, we, we will surely need second line third line drugs in the future and our pace to develop these drugs is very slow so that's also a big danger and in india uh, it's a big menace people are buying over the counter antibiotics and more and more anti antibiotics are uh, becoming vulnerable and bacteria are learn learning to fight with the most of the antibiotics so antimicrobial resistance is a very important topic for essay and mains and you may have to write big uh, uh, big time uh, questions there and uh, short essays there and it will be a great thing to discuss because it's interesting it's needed and it's a great challenge for humanity so that's the case so it will be a victory for a tb alliance group it's a non-profit group in new york and uh, the drug's name is preto manid today three drug combination is given Bidaquiline, that's a very famous one. This pretomanid and linezolid, these are given as uh, with the name of BPAL regimen, and mainly these are given in the MDR TB cases. Next, in Himalaya, there will be new rules because many people lost their lives, and uh, the authorities say 
it is not a tourist place it's not a picnic place there are many many conditions low level of oxygen ex exertion and uh, very harsh conditions uh, uh, possibilities of uh, storms and all and uh, very low temperatures it it is almost a impossible condition for humans to stay there for a longer period of time and always there are conditions but many people chose to go on this adventurous trip so they lost their lives multiple times now there will be new rules and uh, uh, many conditions will be applicable on these uh, tourist uh, tourism companies and uh, these uh, the, these uh, uh, climbers also they, they must show that they have uh, scaled many other uh, peaks without any difficulty and their uh, medical conditions will also be examined on some stricter norms so these things we will see very soon so parliament uh, was considering uh, this issue and government plans to put some changes there and some harsher conditions will be there because it is about the life of the people and life is very precious and uh, you cannot lose it on any adventure trip there next july was the hottest month on record for earth and uh, sea ice has shrunken drastically i told you about this case that uh, if we compare with the pre-industrial phase then on an average july was having 1.2 degree cent centigrade more temperature on an average and we have made a target of 1.5 degree centigrade according to ipcc assessments so 1.5 degree centigrade is for end of the century 81 years are left and we have a condition that we are going more than 1.2 degree centigrade already we have gone and 1.5 degree centigrade is a target for 2100 so you can imagine what can be a possibility will we be able to control it uh, till 1.5 degrees centigrade a big no will we be able to control it for 2 degrees centigrade by 2100 again a big no many many almost all the experts are saying it is totally impossible the way we are moving and noa now says that uh, it was the hottest year on record so it, it, it's a dangerous thing and uh, uh, as a topic uh, and main topic in both the areas uh, this issue is applied so this is all for today we will meet again tomorrow come in the mcq lesson in the evening thanks a lot keep watching it was a bit sign